Again, welcome to DSLT 734 class. This lecture is covered by normal probability distributions. Our main objective is to determine if a probability experiment is a binomial experiment. Also to find binomial probabilities using the binomial probability formula. We're also going to learn how to find binomial probabilities using the binomial table and also graph a binomial distribution. We're also going to learn how to find the mean variance standard deviation of a binomial probability distributions. So first we start with the uh, conditions for a binomial experiment. The first condition said, the experiment is repeated for a fixed number of tries where each try is independent of other tries. So the first try cannot determine the next or the second try. And also the experiment is repeated, repeated for a fixed number of tries. Now, second condition said there are only two possible outcome. Actually, that's why it's called binomial experiment. By means two. There are only two possible outcome of interest for each try. So the outcome can be classified as success or a failure. And the third condition said, the probability of success P at X is the same for each try. And also the random variable S will count the number of successful tries. So this is the notation for binomial experiment. N will represent the number of times a try is repeated and lowercase p will be the probability of success. Lowercase q will be the probability of failure, which is normal will be one minus p. Now, why is it so? Because we know a binomial experiment have only two possible outcome and the total probability value is always one and the values are between zero to one. So this means if probability of success is 0.75, then probability of failure will be 0.25, one minus 0.75. Also the lowercase s will represent the number of success in the n tries. So we have example binomial experiment. Here they say we should decide whether the experiment is a binomial experiment. If it is, we should specify the values of lowercase n, lowercase p and lowercase q. And also we should list the possible values of the random variable X. So our question here said a certain surgical procedure has an 85% chance of success. Yeah, this is a binomial experiment. Why? Because a surgical procedure or a surgery, we have only two options. Either the surgery was successful or it's failure. So, a surgical procedure is a binomial experiment. Now a doctor performs a procedure on eight patients. So this means our lowercase n will be eight. Then the random variable represents the number of successful surgeries. So the random var variable lowercase x can be from zero to eight. Zero means there's no any successful in any of the try. One means we have one, successful out of the eight tries, etc. So let's see the solution. This is a binomial experiment because again, as we said, each surgery have two possible outcomes, either successful or failure. And now each surgery represents a try and we have eight surgeries. Now each one is independent of the others. Also, there are only two possible outcomes of interest for the, each surgery. And also the probability of success P at X is 0.85 for each surgery. So which means probability of failure will be 0.15. Now the random variable S will count the numbers from zero to eight, which is how many successful surgeries we have. So again, that's the result N equal to eight because we have, that's the number of tries, the number of surgeries. P is 0.85, which was given to us that would be the probability of success. So Q probability of failure will be one minus P, which gives us one minus 0.85, which will give us 0.15. Then as we said, X can be somewhere between zero to eight. 
the total number of tries is eight. So we can have either no success or all the eight are successfully. So S will be from zero to eight. Now let's look at second example. Here they said a jar contains five red marbles and nine blue marbles and six green marbles. And this means the total marbles will be 25, six plus nine will give us 15, actually it's 20, sorry, 20. So the jar contains five red marbles, nine blue marbles, and then six green marbles, 20. Now you randomly select three marbles from the jar without replacement. The random variable will represent the number of red marbles. Okay, so if that's the case, this is not a binomial experiment. Why? Because we have three different colors. Probability of success here will be if we select red rumbles, uh, sorry, red marbles. But there's a chance we may select blue or green or red. So there's three possible outcomes. So this is not, not a binomial experiment. Now the probability of, probability of selecting a red marble on the first try is five by 20 because we have five red and the total marbles are 20. Now, because the marble is not replaced, this means the probability of success red for subsequent try is no longer 520. If I pick the first one, this next will be four by 90. Then the third, it will be three by 18. So it's enough. Now the tries are not independent and the probability of success is not the same for each try. Because the first is five by 20, second will be four by 19. So we can see that one of the condition of binomial experiment, the probability of success should be the same for each try. In this case, it's not. So let's go to the next, which is the binomial probability formulas. Now, binomial probability formula is always given to us by the combination of n and x, remember n is the total tries, s will be the number of success in the total tries. So combination of n and x, in our previous lecture, lectures, we learned about permutation and combinations. Combination formula here, which is c, n and x, is n factorial divided by n minus x factorial times s factorial. Then this is times p to the power x, which is probability of success to the power of the number of successful try x, times q to the power n minus x. So again, n represent the number of tries. Lowercase p represent probability of success. Q represent one minus p, which is the probability of failure. And s will be the number of success in n tries. So let's see an example here. Here they say a microfractured knee surgery has a 75% chance of success on patients with degenerative knees. So the probability of success will be 0.75. Now the surgery is performed on three patients. So that means N will be three. Find the probability of the surgery be successful on exactly two patients. This means X will be again two. Now there's two ways we can solve this. We can solve this by drawing a tree diagram and use the multiplication rule. So for example, we went through a tree diagram in our previous lectures. The first surgery means we have only two outcomes, so S and F. Now in the second surgery, within S again, we may have S and F again. F may have S and F. Third surgery, each S will be S and F, F will be S and F, S will be S and F, another F will be S and F. So total here, if we look, should be eight. Now we lay down the combination, we can get S, 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 F, by look, using the trade diagram, S, F, S, S, F, 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 S, S, F, S, F, 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 S, F, F, F. And those are the outcome possible combination. Remember the question say, what's the probability that we may have two successfully? So look, SS is here, SS is here, SS. We are looking for how many SS we have. 
First, we can find the probability of each one, the number of success. This here is three, two, two, one, two, one, one, zero. So we looking for, the question said, what's the probability? Find the probability of soldier being success on exactly two, not less than two, not greater than two. So which means we have SSF one, two, only three. That's why we have three times the number of success, nine by 64. We can see here nine by 64, another two, nine by 64, another two is nine by 64. How do we get the nine by 64? Remember the probability for each one. Like here we have three fourth, three fourth, one fourth for the three here. So total gave us nine by 64. Because again, we know the number of, then again, let's go back to the question. Why we have three fourth? The number of success is 75%. 75% means three fourth. So when you look here, for example, SSS, S is success, so it's three fourth, 7.75. So three fourth, three fourth, three fourth. That's why SSS, the probability will be 27 by 64. Then here we have SSF. S will be 3 4 times 3 4, then F is what? 1 4. So 3 4, 3 4, 1 4. For example, S, F, F here, S is 3 4. F is 1 4, another F is 1 4. So it's 3 by 64. So that's the multiplication rule. Very straightforward, simple. But now we're going to use the probability form. As we said, the total number of uh, the uh, tries is 3. So and X should be two because we say at least exactly two is successful. And we know P is 0.75, which is three fourth. So Q will give us one minus 0.75, which is one fourth. So again, we know all the values. We plug in C three two, three fourth square, one fourth three minus two. Again, one fourth is Q, three fourth is P. P raised to the power X, so two. Q raised to the power n minus x, so 3 minus 2. That's the formula. And we know combination of 3, 2 will give us 3 factorial, 3 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Then we have our 3 fourth square times 1 fourth to the power 1. So when we do all this multiplication finish and calculations, we get 0.422, which is same as the multiplication rule. We got oh, roughly 0.422 also. So next is the binomial probability distribution. Here we say we should list the possible value of X with the corresponding probability of each. So example is given binomial probability distribution for microfracture knee surgery. Remember the N was given to be three, the total procedure, surgery procedure. Probability of success is 0.75, which is three fourth. So to list the probability, distribution for this question. So we have X and P at X, we say zero, one, two, three. So it's based on the probability of success. And uh, we have, we've calculated each one. Actually the one we just calculated in example was, what's the probability that X is two, the successful is two. And uh, we find using the probability formula, we find it to be 0.422. The same thing we can find for S is one then we can also find for S is three. So yet it's a use binomial probability formula to find the probabilities. So if S is one, let's go back to the question. If S is one, then I'm going to have three, C three and one. Still, I'm going to have three fourth because that is the probability of success. But this time it's only one successful. So three fourth to the power one, one fourth to the power three minus one. And that will give us the 0 0.141. Now, constructing a binomial distribution. Here we say in a survey, workers in the US were asked to name their expected source of retirement income. Seven workers who participated in a survey are randomly selected and asked whether they expect to rely on social security for retirement income. 
Now we're going to create a binomial probability distribution for the number of workers who responded yes. And this is our data given here. Now, 25% of the working America is expected to rely on social security for the retirement income. And remember, there's only seven uh, sample responders. So N will give us seven. Probability of success for the social security, uh, rely on social security was given to us to be 25%. So that would be 0.25. If that is the case, Q will be 0.75. And since the social and uh, the total respondents, the survey is seven people. S can be between zero to seven. So next we can find the probability distribution from when S is zero all the way to when S is seven. Again, using the probability binomial probability formula here. C seven and zero since S is zero, 0.25 P successful to the power zero, 0.75 to the power seven because seven minus zero is seven. Then seven minus one, the second option will be six because X is one and we have seven and one. So we find all the probability formula uh, values here. The last one, S is equal to seven. So C, seven to seven and 0.25 to the power seven, 0.75 to the power zero. And the answer will be 0 0.0001. So that's the probability distribution for the possible S values from zero to seven. And if we had this, total should give us one. So here we say all of the probability are between zero and one, and the sum of the probability should be roughly one. Now let's try another example here. Here we're going to find the binomial probabilities. A survey indicates that we have 41% of women in the US consider reading their favorite leisure time activity. You randomly selected four US women and asked them if reading is their favorite leisure time activity. Find the probability that at least two of them responded yes. So here we can see that we have our P. So we indicate that 41% of the women in the US consider reading their reading, consider reading as their favorite leisure time activity. So we have the probability of success. Now you randomly select four, so that will be n, n equal to four, and then find the probability that at least two of them, so this means x will be two. So let's look, n is four, p is 0 0.41 because it's 41%, and q will give us 0.59 because p is 0 0.41, q will be one minus 0 0.41, so that will give us 0 0.59. Now, since at least two means two or more, we have to be careful here. Not exactly two. If it's exactly two, then S equal to two. But here the question says find the probability that at least two. So the total is four. So we can have two, three, and four. So we have we have to find the sum of probability of two, probability of three, and probability of four. Now here the question said find the probability that at most two of them respond yes then we are going to look for the probability of zero, uh, one, and then two, because at most is two. So it will be two or less. At least two will be two or more. And the highest we can go is four because we n is equal to four. So let's find each one. So we find the probability that s equal to two, that give us c four and two, point four one square times 0.59 square. And that gives us 0 0.351094. When S is 3, we get C4 in 3, 0 0.41 to the power 3 times 0 0.59 to the power 1. Then S equal to 4 means C44, which will give us 1. And because if we have the total tries we have is 4, and the success is 4, then it will be only one combination. So that's when the answer is one. So when we get the probability of all S is two, S is three, S is four, we had all together. So our total answer will give us 0 0.542. Now let's write the next question using technology. The result of a recent survey indicate that when 
grilling, 59% of household in the United States use gas grill. If you randomly select 100 household, what is the probability that exactly 65 household use gas grill? Now here they say we should use the technology to, to find the probability. And so this is a binomial. Why? Because this is about grilling. Either I'm using it or I don't use it. So the outcome is two. And also the tries are independent from each other. And the probability of each try is the same. And here they say 100 households. So N is the 100. The probability for 59% of households, so 0.59. So this means Q will give me again 0.41. X is 65 because our question is, what is the probability that exactly, exactly 65? So S is 65, at least 65, 65 up to 100, and at most 65 from zero to 65. Yes, exactly, so S is 65. So again, we have the whole concept. We can solve this again by using uh, a technology, for, for example, uh, we can use a mini tab or any, or even a, a graph table also. And the next question also, we can use a, ta uh, a graph table as we said earlier. And about 30% of working adults spend less than 15 minutes each way commuting to, your, to their jobs. You randomly select six working adults. What is the probability that exactly three of them spend less than 15 minutes each way community to work. Use the table to find the probability. So again, the table in our test book, we can use it based on the question. N will give us six because six working adult. P will give us 0 0.30 because we said again, 30% at about 30% of working adults. So P is 30%. <laughs> and S will give us three. So we can use the table two in our test book to solve this problem. So we can see the probability value we have. Remember we have three. So we go three and then again, we're going to do this in the class. Another example, 59% uh, of household in, in US subscribe to cable TV. You randomly select this household and ask each if they subscribe to cable TV. Construct a probability distribution for the random variable X, then graph the distribution. So this means again, N will give a six because random select is household. And then the pro 59% of household in US subscribe to cable TV. So P will be 0.59, which means Q will be 0.41. Find the probability for each of value of X. So here we can use the probability formulas to find the probability of X when it's zero, one, two, three. Again, here we didn't solve this problem because uh, we know N is six, P is 0.59, Q is 0.41. X will start from zero. So we know the formula will be C and X, Q to the power N minus X times P to the power X. So we know what is X, we start from S is zero, one, two, three, et cetera. We know Q, we know P, we know N. It's same as our previous example, then we come up. The next will be finding the mean variance and standard deviation of a binomial distribution. Now with binomial distribution to find the mean, it's always the N times the P, always N times the P. To find the variance is N times P times Q. And to find the standard deviation is square root of the variance, which is square root of MPQ. Again, the MPQ, we already discussed it. N will be the total number of tries. P is the probability of success and Q is the probability of failure. Always Q is one minus P. So let's see one example here. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, they say about 56% of the days in a year are crowded. We should find the mean variance and standard deviation for the number of crowding days during the month of June. We should interpret the result and determine any unusual values. So we know N is what, 30? 
because June, the normal of this, then P is 0.56, Q is 0.44, because it's a 56% of the days in the year crowding. So to find the mean, it will be N times P. So that's 16.8. Now to find the variance will be N times P times Q. So if P is 0.56, then Q will be 0.44, because one minus 0.56 is 0.44. So that gives us 7.4. And then we can find the standard deviation will be the, it will be the square root of the variance, which is MPQ square root. And that will give us square root of uh, 7.4, will give us 2.7. So again, the formula to find the mean for binomial distribution is N times P. Variance is N times P times Q. Standard deviation is square root of the variance. So that's our value for mean, variance 7.4, standard deviation 2.7. So here we say on average, there are 16.8 crowding days during the month of June. Now you can see that we use N to be 30 because June have 30 days. So the standard deviation is about 2.7 days. And we say the value that are more than two standard deviations from the mean are considered unusual, which is 16.8 minus two times 2.7, which will give us 11.4. That's a joke with 11 crowding days will be unusual. Or 16.8 plus two times 2.75, uh, that also will be unusual. So that will be the conclusion of these lectures. Again, these lectures we could focus on binomial probability distribution. First, we start with the conditions. What conditions stand for binomial probability distribution? And we learn how to use the formula, binomial distribution formula to find the probabilities. Also, we went through the mean, media, and uh, sorry, we went through the mean, variance, and standard deviation of finding binomial distribution. Thank you for your time. See you in the next lectures.